Good evening, everyone, and welcome back. Yes, we have a little bit of a surprise trip today. Um, we were originally going to go swimming, but w because that's what we do on Tuesdays. But Hannah is a little bit like not feeling under the weather. So she's feeling under the weather, so I'm streaming instead. And hello, Red. Hello, Ellie. Welcome. So uh, the plan for today: nail the tiger. Just, just skin him. Tan him and uh, make a rug out of him. Ironic, really, you know, because he, he threatened to do the same thing with us, so... So, uh, yeah, we shall do that. <laughs> yes, we all want the tiger rug. So, let's fix the camera and all that. I should really do something about this, I have no idea. Ah! I need to fix the, uh, I need to refix the, um, this overlay for something here, you know? It'll be better once we get into uh, the uh, the other games, the um, the DS games, but still. <clears throat> so how have you all been today? So we finally got to see the tiger on the stand. I've almost got this case one now, Nick. I wish I could agree. With I wish I could agree. Hello there, fair and well. I'm bored at work and just woke up. <laughs> oh! Things not going your way here, Pix? Huh? When I cross-examined Mr. Armstrong just now, he said he was just doing what the tiger told him to do. But Gona picked up on it, remember? He pointed out that without proof, we don't know what he, if what he testified is the truth. Ah! Uh, hello, Mina. Welcome. <laughs> you, you mean, you think Mr. Armstrong was lying? I don't know, but if that's the line the prosecution takes, we could be in trouble. I get a feeling we don't have a case-making evidence we're going to need. Hey, pal! Detective Gumshoe? Why are you so jumping about, Detective? Your hair is standing on end. Hey, that's the pot calling the kettle black, little top knot. Um, it's not a top knot. <laughs> Never mind about the hair. Just calm down, all right? I, 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 I can't stand still when I don't have a job to do. I, 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 I get kind of wound up. Uh. <laughs> you might, you know, man. I could just like send everyone over to you afterwards. But yes, I'm. <laughs> What's <laughs> I just have to do this, you know, because I'm kind of stuck for time. And uh, this was just an opportunity because Tenho is feeling under the weather. She's uh, got a slight of cold, so no swimming today. Oh, that's unfortunate, fair and well. <laughs> Get off with a bath this time. <laughs> what? I mean, I can send everyone over to your stream afterwards. Feel, I mean, you don't. You shouldn't be feel tied up here, you know. Ah! No kidding. You you gotta ha have something that you need me to do. Anything, pal. Well, um... Hey, I'm gonna take a jog back down to the precinct. I could get some prints analyzed for you if, if you got an hour. An hour? The trial would be reconvened by then. But Nick, we still don't have a really decisive piece of evidence, right? True. Without some kind of trump card to pull out of the bag, we're really stuck. Ah, good, excellent. Then I can ship everyone over to you when I'm done at nine. Uh, you said you could get some fingerprint analysis done in an hour? <laughs> you bet. In that case, would you mind checking out the prints on this for me? Um, it'll have to be this one. If you're going back to the station anyway, could you find out whose print are this? Oh, hey, that's a small bottle I gave back to you this morning, right? Yeah, I think it's time we saw this one last mystery on who, who the prints on it belong to. <laughs> yeah, eat slower. Sure thing, pal. Actually, it's been gnawing at me too. Okay, I'll get this back to the lab right away. Just make sure you don't lose the case before I get back. He's got so much confidence in us, like, don't lose the case! This is pretty much the final showdown, I guess. It's time to, to separate the phonies from the real guys! 
Okay, <laughs> I have to get into the mood. Uh, I just realized I don't have a bottle of water. Oh well. <laughs> nope. What? Okay. <clears throat> gotta, gotta get the whole thing going, you know? The court will now reconvene. Mr. Gorda, did you find this Furia Tiger? Another cup of coffee? Ha! <laughs> I even tamed him for you. It was a three cup job, no problem. Tamed him? The guy's name is Furia Tiger, but come on! He's pretty lively. Be careful, he still bites. Very well, please show Mr. Tiger to the stand. Um, witness, please state your name and occupation for the- Oh! Ah! Don't hide under the table, Mina, unless there's room for me down there too. I, um, um, would you mind you, what you said to me? No, 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 nothing. I didn't say nothing, honest. Who would have guessed that the fear would induce the bad Brooklyn accident into the church? I think I did, Mina. Oh well. <laughs> it goes really. <laughs> I got business to take care of, you hear me? I don't really know. I saw, if it's a Brooklyn accent, I don't really know how to do that. So who the hell called me into this hole? Was it you, Spikey? Ah, no, no, of course not. It was the judge. Your Honor! Oh, oh dear. I uh, seem to have dropped my pen. Now where on earth is it? Uh, don't mind me, just carry on with proceeding as normal. That's it. We're doomed. Maybe you just didn't hear me. I said who the hell was that called me in here? There is no need to shout. We can all hear you. What do you just say? There is no point struggling. You are caught in a snare. The relentless snare of the law. <laughs> and you are the one, and I am the one that's hauled you in. <laughs> Too cool. D -d Don't let him get a better of you, Nick. Let's start with the basics. You know about the incident in question, correct? Incident? I don't know nothing about no stinking incident, mask boy. You mean you didn't attend the previous trial of Maggie Bride? Maggie who? I got more important things to do than watch courtroom dramas. No, oh, of course. Well, perhaps you can give your testimony then. Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, I, that's the spirit one, right? Um, no, that's not spirit. Spirit that's number seven. So there's three. Apollo. One. Yeah. Spirit. Yeah, the spirit one. Please tell us about what you did on the day of the murder. <laughs> Phoenix Wright. You was the one who set this up, didn't you? You was gonna regret the day you ruffled the tiger's fur. You hear what I'm saying? Uh, maybe I should have brought a diaper with me today? <laughs> I got that it's just a, one chill cool customer, it's just like, silence. It's even cooler than Fran Francesca. <laughs> Boss mess! <laughs> I don't know nothing about no murder. I was tied up with business in December last year. Spent all my time in my office. I got whales lined up to borrow cash from the tenderlander every single day. You just wanna check my alibi just to ask Violetta. Oh, at last I found my pen. Ah, very well then, Mr. Wright, you're a cross examiner. Oh, what is it? Please, witness, if you can refrain from shouting like that. <laughs> I know the kind of games that guy in the blue plays. That lowlife ain't no lawyer. 
He just punch away with stupid details until he wins. Low life me? Listen up, smarty. Every time you ask me something that doesn't relate to this case, I'm gonna bail you $50,000. And you are gonna borrow that cash from me. Uh, that's one loan contract I refuse to sign. Don't think I ain't gonna hurt you when you tangle with a tiger. <laughs> I love a good spectator sport. But just wait a minute, that's not really. This witness is, how can I put it, a hungry tiger roaming the urban jungle. Get on his bad side and he'll bite everyone's heads off. Yours too. Very well. I have no choice but to impose a penalty system here. You was a better be listening. I got biz I said I got business to take care of. Big business. If I don't split now, I ain't gonna catch my bus. The court will impose a penalty for any irrelevant pressing of the testimony. Keep that in mind as you begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Yes, y your honor. Y you can do it, Nick. Come out from under there already, would you, Maya? So we can't just press him willy-nilly, so this is the one thing we have to press him on, because that's the only one that we have to dispute right now. Oh! <laughs> I don't really quite know what she's doing, but she's like, you know what, you should just go and lie in bed. The way you're sitting there isn't good. Go lie down in bed. Do it. Do it. Now. Bed. You've been working all day. Bed. Now. Now. Go. Bed. Or at the very least a sofa. Chop chop. I'm just trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to play. Well, you can you can uh, lay down on the sofa and figure it out there, and then you can come back once you've rested a little bit because you don't look so good. Don't give me that raised eyebrow. It's not going to work. It's actually making it worse for you. Chop chop. Go lie down. <laughs> oh. oh, that's just I'm talking to Tenho. <laughs> Cat. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> oh. Are you sure about that? We're talking about one month ago, you know. You also see the you see these teeth. That's how sharp my secretary is. Sharp? Is he talking about my? Viola Cadarini? Now, go and lie down. <laughs> she writes everything in my scheduler. December. Mainly in the office. That's what it says, so that's where I was. That seems ra like a rather a sketchy schedule. There he goes again. Hmm. What did a tiger did it all the same isn't the issue? What's important was the day uh, of the murder. So now what? We will press harder. Mr. Tiger, what you want? Uh, if you wouldn't mind going into a bit more detail. This is a dead end, right? And you know it. Remember the rules. No, it's essential that we establish a witness alibi accurately. I agree. The victim was killed on December 3rd. Were you in the office that day too? Maybe you said listening. Of course I was. I never set foot outside. I had a meeting all day with a bunch of cats wanting to do business with me. I had never seen that young kid before. Hmm. I do believe the witness last statement was important. Um, Mr. Gordot, if you could please. 
Mr. Tiger, the court asks you that you add the last statement to your testimony. <laughs> Don't let an animal beat you. Be a man, Your Honor, and ask him yourself. <laughs> um, so, this is all wrong. We have evidence of this because... Blah, blah. Mr. Tiger, you claim you didn't know Mr. Glen Elk, but it appears that Mr. Glen Mr. Elk knew you. What? Mr. Elk left a little notice in his calendar. Meet with the tiger. And the date? December 3rd. December 3rd? That's, that's the day of the murder. So, Mr. Tiger, I submit that you did indeed know one Mr. Glen Elk. Because on the very day of the incident, you met with him. <laughs> not bad. You was actually not bad. Sorry? I was just messing with you, sir, to see how good you were. Did you hear that, Nick? He said you're not bad. That's one compliment I can do without. Plus, he's lying through his teeth. Oh, witness. Please remember that you are under oath. Lies will not be tolerated. You would call me a liar, is that what you was doing? The were wrong. So you're saying that you're, you, your claim to have never seen a kid before is the truth? I said I'm dead serious, you so better believe that's the truth. <laughs> then I say that gives me time to enjoy another cup of pure black magic that is while well, you testify for the court again mr tiger oh yes um, would you mind indulging the court witness he actually never met the victim there's gotta be a lie right on there it's time i nail this guy i ain't no liar i never met glenn Elk. There was some lay guy with that name though. What did the borrow cash from me? I set up a meeting with a guy at my office, the Tanda Lander. I went and ran for him, but he never showed up. I ain't never been to that très bien joint you see? How did what do you think of my accent of this guy? I see. That's office is perfectly logical. You had arranged to meet the victim, but he didn't show up. I've heard it pretty hard to keep appointments when you're dead. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I didn't I tell you I got a big deal going on today. I ain't gonna make my bus now, so I gotta have to take the express train. That bill's going straight to you, right? Ah... Uh... Well, we already know that he's been to the Trebion because we don't we have the matches to the uh, Trebion in our inventory. Uh, this one, because we found that at his office. So that's this one. Can everyone just bat Mina now? I think she deserves it. Actually, yes, pat her instead. I think that's more appropriate. Because she is so adverse to pets. Hmm, I'm not sure which one is the most appropriate punishment for Mina. Pets or uh, Baps. Hmm. Ah, we'll just have to see that later. Maybe I can have Kaimo make a like cleft being bapped and all just for Mina or something. <laughs> Mr. Tiger, is there something you'd like to tell the court about these matches? Matches! What you was talking about? We found them in your office at Tender Lender. <laughs> from, they're from that restaurant. Oh. <laughs> if you've never really never been to Trebian before, what was a book of the restaurant's matches doing at your desk? You have been snooping around my stuff now, too, wise guy? What are you? My ball and chain or something? I ain't no board controlling me. <laughs> order! Order! Well, witness, I think it's time you started telling us the truth, don't you? 
Oh, sorry. I'm terribly sorry. Please forgive me. I ain't no pussy cat. I don't go back on what I said. But okay, I was at the joint that day. What? But listen, good, all right. I might have been there, but I still have never met with the kid. Ah, oh, it just my nose itches. Well, well. <laughs> Looks like an order just came in for another testimony. I'm this close to proving it was him. T he did meet with El Glen Elk that day. And he did poison his cup of coffee. He must have. <laughs> I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. When I opened the door to the joint, I saw one ugly scene. The guy was laid all over the table, stiff as concrete. I figured if place wasn't thought already, it was going to be, so I split. I heard the cops' sirens on my way out, and I went back, straight back to my office. I see, you didn't actually meet with him in the end then. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Hold it. If I'm go if I wait around here any longer, I'm not even gonna make the normal express. No more stupid questions. Ha, <laughs> no problem. Another cup of coffee. Anytime Trike presses you on something irrelevant, I'll see that he pays a penalty. Mr. Gordon, that's my job. Your job is to slam that little hammer of yours and call a guilty verdict. So do it. D yes, sir. The special express ain't cheap, right? Just so you know, you since you are paying. Oh man, doesn't the rule of law mean anything around here? Uh, just insane tan, I guess, Red. Just, just tan. Um, so... He is not supposed to be able to see this because he was behind it like a shutter thing, like a thing. So, um... Oh, do we have the... Because of this wall here, and he he was sitting here, so he can't have seen it. So, boop. so let's present that. Objection! You're something of a loan, a loan collecting pro, aren't you, Mister Tiger? Wait, what? <laughs> no one escapes the tiger's clutches. Well, I'm something of a little lie detecting pro. And no one explains the phoenix clutches. I think it's time we got something straight. What's this trite? A new line of irrelevant questioning? These are the floor plans of the scene of the crime. You say you were standing at the entrance, Mr. Tiger? From there, your field of view would have covered an area something like this. Indeed, the witness would have a clear view of the victim's seat. Uh, the, the, the witness. Isn't that what I just said? I saw the back of the kid's head. Unfortunately for you, that's not possible. If the court would think back, you'll remember that between each of the tables... ...is a tall partition. Why, that's true! Now, look at the plans again. The truth is plainfully, ob painfully obvious. From the entrance, the field of vision to, of any customer walking in ends here. So, from the entrance of Trebian, you couldn't have seen the victim's seat. But you did see the victim that day because you met with him. Objection. Wrong. Have you forgotten the old man's testimony yesterday? The victim was alone at his table. But the defense just proved that point to be moot. The victim witnessed by uh, Mr. Kubo, Kujo was not Glen L but a fake. What? In order to have Mr. Kujo falsify test 
falsely testify, the real killer posed as the victim he had just killed and acted out, out a charade. That will do! This trial has gone on long enough without the obvious question being answered. Who exactly is this real killer who impersonated the victim? You say the killer murdered Glenn Elk, and then impersonated him, his victim for, in a performance from Victor Kudo. In that case, Mr. Wright, reveal the identity of this criminal to the court. Oh, God. Obviously, the killer is Fiero Tiger. No one else could have done it. What? Well, witness? <laughs> no, that's cute. You think you can pin this on the tiger? Maybe you don't understand that the tiger is king of the jungle. So I dare you to say it again. Come on, you got the guts. You can't threaten me, Mr. Tiger. I. It's a defense. Go on and tell him, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Mr. Wright! Sounds to me like it must be you, old man. You have got guts, I give you that. M Mr. Wright, don't leave me to handle this alone. <laughs> Perhaps I can end this embarrassment. M M Mr. Godot. Another cup of coffee. Let's just go back over Mr. Kudo's testimony one more time. The old man didn't see the victim. Oh, no, no, no. Was the victim he saw the real victim or not? That doesn't matter. The fact remains he saw the accused put the poison into the coffee. Mm, yes, it was the waitress who poisoned the coffee. B very impressive, Mr. Goddard, waiting for my absence to launch your attack. Ha! Found your pet as last trite. It was in my pocket. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Kudo witnessed two people that day. He saw the victim, the supposed Glen Elg, and the waitress from behind. Yes, your point, Mr. Wright. I think the conclusion is obvious. If this Glen Elg was really the killer in disguise, then surely it's possible that the waitress was also part of the show. What? You mean the waitress was an imposter as well? The defendant, Miss Bride, fell unconscious immediately after the incident. And someone used her fainting to hatch an elaborate plan to pin the murder on her. Oh, what on earth was it? Who was this waitress that Mr. Kudo witnessed? That'll be Viola. Who was this woman? Her name is Vio uh, Viola Ca Cadaverini. She's an employee of Tenderlander. You are making a big mistake. Do you know whose Viola's grandfather is? You bet. Better be going home in an armored truck tonight if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> stop shaking, Nick. Where was I? Yes, the defendant, Miss Vine, has stated the following. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, I should maybe get some more of these. Some more. Some more of this. Like, be paranoid while um, we're kind of sick. There are just too many contradictions in this case. The second man at the victim's table that who nobody but Miss Bride so, seemed to have seen. The earpiece worn by the victim in his left ear when his that eardrum has ruptured. Uh, there's no coffee, uh, no coffee quite yet. Just uh, no, at least no extra coffee for Godot yet. But we have uh, just just discussing things. Oh, and the radio show that he was supposedly listening to half an hour ago after after it was uh, over. But no extra coffees for Godot quite yet. There's only one logical explanation that clears up all of these contradictions. The whole incident took, pl twi uh, took place twice, once for real and once for show. 
and Mr. Fury Tiger, who is the, the only person who could have committed a crime, is you.